Hi everyone, I'm going to be doing the cauldron and the spell books and things like that from this picture by Johanna Basford from her Ivy and the Inky Butterfly Halloween picture. Um, I thought it would be handy to just do these uh, these little Halloween themed items which are quite fun to do. Now I'm going to start with the cauldron. Now I could have done it just silver but I've got a few silver bits through the picture so I've decided to do it a darker colour but I don't want it just black because it will just look it just be plain black. I want it to have a little bit of shine so it look like a dark sort of metal. Now I am starting with the black though so I'm going in with the under here where I think there'll be some shadow and here just a tad as well and then here and here now inside is a tricky idea I want it to be darker than the outside now I'm going to do the ladle in a more silvery colour so it stands out a little bit bring some black in here and underneath now we've got this pattern on the um, on it as well. Now I'm not going to ignore the pattern, I'm going to make it try to make it look like it's um, embossed so it's um, standing out from the rest of the cauldron. So we'll see how that pans out as we go. So again I'm just doing dark all the way around and I'm not pressing really hard, I don't want it really really black, I can always come back in and darken it if necessary but I'm just doing a light layer and trying to make it lighter as I go towards the centre of the cauldron and I'm going to use my um, next darkest greys in a minute to pull that in more. Now we'll do some shadow under here eventually. I'll just leave my black to one side at the moment and I'm going to go in with my Payne's grey. Very blunt. I should just sharpen it. Doing such a small item it's good to keep your pencil sharpened. I know it's quite, um, when you've got expensive pencils like these it's quite scary sharpening them. You keep thinking you're going to lose the pencil and they'll run out and things like that. So I'm just doing quite a lot of dark here. But I have the attitude that if you buy expensive pencils and then you don't lose them, use them, sorry, you're actually losing the money. You're not enjoying them. You need to enjoy them. But uh, again, I can understand the worry with uh, with wondering, you know, whether you should be sharpening them. But if you want a nice picture, then you may have to just do that. So uh, give it some thought. Of course, you may just have budget pencils. I tend to use a mixture, so I've got the polychromos. I've got some really expensive um, Derwent Lightfast, which are beautiful, but uh, use a very different technique to these with those, I find, anyway. And I've got some Stedler Ergosoft, which I really enjoy using as well and they're great for really little pictures. You can see what I'm doing is I'm just extending where I did the dark, I'm just extending it a little bit. I'm very sorry about that, my telephone rang and it was a wrong number. Anyway, we're going to carry on. So I'm just going to try and blend all this in so we don't get a sort of line. Now we don't, I'm not going to take too many light greys, I'm going to keep it quite dark so it looks yeah, I'm thinking a sort of pewter colour or just a very shiny black, something like that. So we'll see. So I'm just bringing this in more a little bit gently. Now I'm just going to take, this will probably be my lightest black, um, grey, sorry, which is the cold grey six. Sorry, let's get in shot so you can see it. And uh, again, needs a bit of a sharpen. Now I'm going to leave some white though to give the idea of shine. It's not ultra shiny like the silver, but just leave a little bit, just like that. And uh, the same on the other hand, or we may darken up the um, edges a bit. So it's really is just a very small bit. That one looks a bit dark. there. And ha and like here, we just got that little bit. That's going to stay as it is. We're just going to draw that one in a little. That's it. And then just to, I'm now pressing really, really lightly just to extend in this colour and then I should decide on how much to lay down once I've uh, got a light layer. And as you can see, I'm leaving this white. And I'm thinking it's going down here. 
So I need to try and just think about where it's going to be. And the same on these legs. I'm just going to do the smallest bit. There we go. Okay, and now we need to think about these bits. Now these are going to be rays. They're going to be light in colour. So I'm just going to go over them really lightly, but they still need to give the impression that they're made from the same material as the main pot. And I'm also thinking while I'm doing this about are we going to have anything coming out of the cauldron? Are we going to have a sort of bubbling potion of some sort in there, which would be fun. Now for me this is all too light, so I'm going to go over it all and start bringing that dark colour in. But we need these little bits to stand out, even though I've just coloured over one. Um, so they look like they are catching their light more than the rest of the pot. We'll help to emphasise that in a minute when we add some, go back to some black. Now, now I'm leaving a white bit in the middle, but I feel that it should be shadowy underneath. Which is why I'm pushing down harder getting more colour around here. I feel this needs to still be a bit darker. Around here too. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my black. I'm going to do some shadows underneath these bits here and just a little bit around the top. Basically I follow Johanna's line but I bring it down a bit at the bottom so it looks more like a shadow. This one doesn't need to be quite as hard because we're on the lighter part of the pot. And then this last one which looks like it needs a bit of grey on to me. And then we do it under here. And you can see it just starts to look like it's standing out a bit. I can definitely see that parts of this are too light, but that's okay. That's why we just do it bit by bit. We start to see it and realise what's going on. So now I'm going to take my lightest grey again, which is the cold grey. It's upside down cold grey six and it just add a bit of darkness in here that's better and in here I think that needs a tad more and now that's coming together I'm much happier with that now now the ladle, as I say, is going to be silvery, so we're going to use slightly lighter greys for that. My darkest grey I'm going to use for that is the Cold Grey 5. And I'm just going to start at the bottom, do a little bit there and a little bit at the top. And then take a slightly lighter shade, I think I'm going to use the Cold Grey 3. And just put it down a bit so you can see it better and leave a little white gap in the middle. So there's our ladle. So there we go with our cauldron. Now I'm going to move on to doing these these items here. Now we've got these two little potion bottles, we've got these eyeballs and we've got the book. Now the book first of all I'm going to do it a nice dark red leather cover. Now I noticed that here I've accidentally coloured the grass in it so I'm going to try and rub that out, although I've just remembered it's felt tip pen. Hmm, so that's going to be a challenge. What we're going to do is we're going to colour over it and see what happens. So I'm going to go in with quite a dark red because I'm thinking nice red leather book. So middle, of course we could have done it black. I think that's a bit more spooky, but I don't want to overdo the black. There's going to be some black in the sky when, uh, when I get around to doing the sky. So uh, I think red... It's quite cool and it will stand out. So I've just done an even layer of red, you can see, and now I'm going to go in and do where I think the shadow is, would be a little bit darker. And I'm going to use my um, dark sepia to add some sh more shadow. So 
around here where the pages would be shading and the same on this side I think if we just put that all over there it just looks like it's all in shadow we can hide the fact that it's green whoops okay now the pages of the book now we can leave them white but I often find if we leave things white it looks like it's uncolored so I tend to use actually whoops for paper I tend to use the green gold there you go sounds a little bit strange but I do a really light covering all over the pages what I'm going to do with this one is I'm not going to do the bits that are bones because I think um, they look pretty good left white and I just do you can see I'm really gently just all over the page just to make it look like it's old and slightly yellowed I think an old spell book might look like that if you don't want this yellowed look you can obviously leave it white or you could use a cream or something like that so it wouldn't be quite so dark but uh, and I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit of shadow down there in the middle of the book and uh, maybe a bit here where these bottles are shading it just there and there not too much and a bit where that page is. Now I'm not going to go in here with dark sepia and shadow, I just want it left quite light um, for the page. And now we've got our eyeballs. Now I'm thinking, I like the eyeballs, white and dark, I'm not going to change those, but what I'm thinking is there's no iris on that eye, that's just a pupil and a white. So we're going to draw in some irises. Now I'm thinking, let's go for red. It's Halloween after all. So we're going to go with some scarlet red and we're going to do a few so I'm just colouring around the black it's quite difficult to get it accurate because they are very very small and I'm going to do a few like that one hasn't got an eyeball and then I think I might do a couple in green so I'm going to take my emerald green and do a few green maybe only two and then maybe do the others blue although blue might be a bit boring but I haven't really got an eyeball blue I'm just going to go for this slightly darky turquoise blue why not helio turquoise you could choose you could do yellow as well I think yellow eyes are quite Halloweeny, but um, I'm not sure they would stand out which I chose this colour now that one there with the red that hasn't got an eyeball I'm just going to get a black pen and draw it in this is a um, Stedler pigment liner 0.2. I'm just going to do a tiny dot in the middle. There we go. Okay, now onto the lid. Now, jar lid. Mm, I'm thinking we could do it silver. Like we've got quite a bit of silver, but I think maybe we'll just do it black. It's Halloween after all. We're not going to have any other black um, things in this little part of the picture might make it look a bit more scary so you notice I'm doing it darker here and lighter here just so that it looks like it's shining a little bit gives it a bit more interest as well it's not all one colour there'd be shadow here from the bottles anyway there we go so there's our eyeballs I don't the bit behind where it's sort of glass I'm just going to take the cold grey three that we're using for the cauldron and just do a tiny bit of colour so it looks more like glass um, but we're not going to do we could draw a reflection line on it because there's so much white it's not really going to show up so we're going to leave that now for the two bottles going to do two potions one's going to be purple I think we have to have purple so we're going to start with our this is actually mauve so we're going to start with that and we're go, I'm just picking this bottle I'm not going to do this bottle I'm going to do this bottom bit just very faintly and then the potion itself is going to be quite dark. And you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it right up quite high. I think up to here. There we go. Purple. Now, when I do a bottle and I've got a label, it's quite short to do, but I try and tone it in with the colour of the inside the same with the stopper so I'm going to do the label in my blue violet and I'm just going to do it really lightly as if it's a bit faded 
but a bit darker over the writing like that and I'm going to do the stopper in the same colour because I'm going to do it darker you won't see but it will all just tone in okay now this bottle I feel needs a bit more interest so I'm going to get my white jelly roll pen Sakura jelly roll just going to scribble it on my rough paper and I'm going to add some dots into this potion. I think this is a potion that's bubbling and it's got little dots in it like that and to make the bubble look even more I'm going to take my mauve again and I'm going to put dots in this bit of the bottle there as well you could probably barely see it but there we go and this one now I would often do a sort of bottle green colour but because we've got all this grass I think I'm going to go for a nice pink potion I think something I'd like to drink I really like this pink so I'm going to pick this this is the middle purple pink and we're going to do the same as we did for the other one so we're going to do a fine bit on the bottom and then take it quite dark really hard up to the neck of the bottle like we did before and we'll do the same thing with the cork and the label as well just to give it consistency but the inside the bottle this one's going to look different so there's that pink and we'll use a crimson for the label now this one's poisonous look at that X so again just gently on the label I'm going to darken around the edges this time just for a bit different do the cork in the same way so darker there and there and then in this bottle because it's not going to have bubbles like that one did I'm going to use this um, cold grey 3 to get rid of this white and this bottle is going to have little swirls with our white pen so going to draw little swirls in it. Now you can obviously do whatever you wish to make yours look like a little bubbly potion. Now of course with the cold drum we could also do something coming out of the top. I toyed with the idea of using a Posca pen in green and pink and stuff to make things popping out but I'm not sure how well it will sit in front of this house so I decided not to bother. So there we go. There's that little bit all done. So I hope you enjoyed that and happy colouring. Thank you for watching.